For Sexual Assault Awareness Month, Vanita Dillon, our Title IX coordinator, and Justin Ogbiani, one of our resiliency peers, will be interviewing Fiona Boyle, a female mariner and graduate of the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. This podcast will be a three-part series. We will first dive into getting to know Fiona and her story behind writing her article in the Maritime Executive, if April was the only month Solace was discussed. In the second part, we will have a Q&A with one of our resiliency peers, Justin Ogbiani. And last, we will talk about Fiona's experiences in the maritime industry that has built her resiliency. Be sure to follow our podcasts on the Resiliency Project website, www.csum.edu slash resiliency. Hello, and welcome to our Sexual Assault Awareness Month program with guest Fiona Boyle. I've known Fiona for many years, and I am so delighted to have her join us today. Also with us today is Cadet Justin Agbiani. He's a senior at Cal Maritime, and his major is Global Studies and Maritime Affairs. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here today. Um, I would love to invite Fiona. Could you introduce yourself? Tell us what you've been doing all these years. Hi, Vanita and Justin. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy to be here and discuss resiliency and sexual assault awareness month with you. Um, So I'm a U.S. Merchant Marine Academy graduate, 2007, and I've been uh, shipping offshore uh, on oil tankers since then. And I've also uh, managed time to do about five years of active duty in the Navy Reserve uh, and balance both careers. So um, my passion for sexual assault awareness uh, has really come from uh, when I worked at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, and my eyes were wide open um, to different events and, um, and life events that would occur to the college population and um, myself not being... Uh, exposed or aware or really trained enough on on what to do and seeking out those resources. And the more I learned, the more I, I cared about the topic and and really the overall wellness and well-being of all of us as individuals, specifically uh, the students while I worked there. And then really saw that, you know, it's it can be cadets on ships and then mariners in general, and then it keep kept uh, progressing from there. So um in, in learning from the sexual assault response coordinator at the school, uh, I've just uh, really um, delved into uh, this topic and, and how I can promote awareness and uh, build momentum on the topic. So um, I think that's really how we kind of uh, landed here today, but that's kind of a quick summary of my background. Thank you for that, Fiona. Um, so. I know you authored an article last year. Yes. Um, it was called, uh, If April Was the Only Month mm-hmm. Solace Was Discussed. So Safety of Life at Sea was discussed. Um, it was a very interesting approach to um, sexual assault awareness. And could you share with us what inspired you to write that article? Sure. Um, well, first off, I'm just thankful that... Uh, platforms like Women Offshore and Maritime Executive even wanted to to publish it. But for myself, what prompted me is because I, every time I went to sea, especially as you start out and you're the safety officer as a third mate, and um, in, I was uh, every time on a ship in my chief mate classes and um, preparation and training, um, you're constantly having tough conversations. Like, it, whether it's at drills or um, working with personnel on board um, and just safety is at the forefront of everything we do on vessels uh, or it should be. And um, what I was finding was there's so much regulation and a history of change based off of uh, tragedy and trauma 
through uh, more tragedy from, you know, vessel disasters, um, NTSB reports, Coast Guard investigations, um, which have really prompted massive change in the industry um, and specific to safety. And I'm like, you know, sexual assault is not a topic that we need um, a tragic event to occur for us to make change. And um, as much as I know that it takes law and policy to change things globally, uh, whether it's through the IMO or the Coast Guard or, or Congress and through lobbying, um, just wanted to pose a question to to the readers of, you know, we've now developed onboard safety cultures and we have all these mandates and requirements for drills, monthly, quarterly, um, you know, before you get underway if 25% of the crew changes out. And it just prompted my thought of if if we brought sexual assault conversation um, to the same level of, uh, insight and, um, that, that safety is embedded into the core of what we do out there. Um, to me, it's, it's, there's no doubt that the conversation just around, um, harassment and, and assault sexual specifically, but also it can entail bullying and, just the spectrum of harm and hostile work environment, um, because we all deserve to live and work uh, with dignity and respect, but especially offshore because of the dynamic that we live and work with out there and um, just the exponential uh, importance that it is for us as mariners. So for me, I just wanted to pose a question that if, uh, if we embedded um, SAM and, and flip the acronym from SOLAS to SAM, um, how could that impact our industry? And, you know, we're constantly learning and evolving and we're still making change to safety. Um, but okay, when when's the right time to integrate uh, the sexual assault conversation to our lifestyle offshore? Because it is, it is happening. Um, there's not a lot of data on it, but it, 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 all of us are impacted. And, um, you know, if, if it's not happening to you personally, um, if someone comes up to you one day and says, hey, this did happen to me, you know, we all have a responsibility, a personal and social responsibility to help uh, our crew members and our shipmates. So it's just bringing awareness to what we can do to improve our life on board and life offshore. And, um, and that was the real intent of the article. 